bent willow chair, a demonstration on a bent willow chair. Uh, I've been teaching how to make bent willow chairs for about 15 years. Uh, we uh, mostly do this at the community ed classes at various uh, schools, in the school shops. We've done it at the Long Lake Conservation Center at Aiken County, Minnesota, and also at the Ely Folk School up in Ely. Uh, what uh, we're going to be doing today is just showing you how to do it. You can do it at home or you can join one of the classes that we do in uh, Minnesota. I'm going to show you what you need for tools. We'll go over here to this side of the workbench. Uh, and you don't have to work on a workbench. A lot of times it's nice to work outside on some type of, type of a table or something. But uh, working outside in the spring and fall makes it nice because you're working with uh, when the weather's nicer. The willow that we collect, we collect uh, where wherever willow grows. Usually that's in low land or medium low land. In Aiken County we have a lot of low land so we have in any of the swamp or swamp edges or field edges we have willows of different type. Uh, we're going to go outside and show you the willow after we build the frame. The, the willow patch below the house, I got most of my willow here. I just go out there. Right now it's very wet so I can't go out there but we have all kinds of Sizes of willows, little ones, big ones. Uh, Sometimes we run out, but there's a lot of willow there. The chair that we're building will be very similar to this one, as you can see. And what we do is we start with making a frame. The frame is made with a front leg, a back leg, the cross support for the seat, and a support for the bottom. Also, an angle support so the chair doesn't uh, rock. The, the willow is <coughs> basically, there are three different parts of the, the willow chair. The arms, which we do first, are bent around. The seat pieces that go up to the top, and then the back arm of uh, the back rest, which is basically just the outside of the frame. The most handy tools are cordless drills. I have two cordless drills because we'll be, we'll be drilling holes in each of the pieces with a drill, a cordless drill, and then we use a, a screws to hold the chair seats together, and we use Torx or, or uh, uh, they also call them lobe screws which don't strip out like, like uh, Phillips might. Or we can also use square head screws, whatever you prefer. But they uh, screw the frame together. So we, we need those two. We use an air nailer or a, a stapler to put the willow pieces on. That'll be later on. So for now, I'll put this on the side. And then other tools that you need to collect your willow you need either a lopper or you need a, 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 a trimming tool of some kind. Usually uh, uh, pruning shears are the best. Also a saw. What I usually do is I use a folding saw, which is like this. I can put it in my pocket and collect the willow uh, with a saw in my back pocket. You need things to trim your willow with. I use a little cleaver. I find that that's about as handy as anything. Also, a pocket knife or a razor blade knife, that works. If you like to peel your, your, uh, your leg material, you can also use a draw knife. Normally, we don't use a draw knife. I use, uh, in fact, there was a, a person in one of the classes that said, oh, I used a potato peeler, and a potato peeler works real nice for for the wood that we use for. So I'm going to move this to the side for now. The material I use for a frame is called tag alder. It's, uh, there's a lot of that in Aiken County. Uh, any of the, of the uh, highway ditches have it. Uh, it's usually the, the, a dark color at this time of the year or in the fall. It'll look like it has uh, little pine cones on it. Uh, but those, those, uh, and it'll be a brown color. I'm going to just step outside and show you what, what I have out there. This is unpeeled, 
alder, and this happens to be dry just because I had some material. On the outside, if you go out here, I had some alder that I peeled. This is tag alder that's peeled. It looks like this when it's uh, unpeeled with the bark on, green, and you peel it and it turns color. If you look at this, it's kind of a reddish color. This happens to be peeled with a uh, potato peeler. This was draw, done with a draw knife. You can see the potato peeler does a better job. It's more even. Because we're working with, with rustic materials, the measurements that we do are, are approximate. All uh, On a ruler, you have all these marks on a ruler. You have big marks and little marks. For the type of work we do, forget the little marks, use the big marks. What we've done is is I've got the pieces for the frame, for the, the chair. In the back of the chair has the back legs, which are approximately uh, 26 inches tall. The front legs are 16. And usually when I start making the frame, I just start putting the two back legs together. I put the front legs opposite them. So it looks something like that. And then I, I need a seat piece and a support piece. So that's where I start. So my seat piece, I have a little angle cut on that. And I only do that because when you bend the willow for the arms, it needs to go around. And sometimes if you don't cut it at an angle, it catches. So I put one piece across the top on this side. And I put my other angle piece on the other side just opposite each other. Then what I do is I start about two inches from the end of this and I'm going to drill a hole. And I drill the hole because if I don't pre-drill, it'll crack. Okay, I have a box of screws. This one goes even with the top. And like I said, you know, I don't have to measure. I go approximately two inches. Get my other drill. And tighten it down. And on the other side, I leave about two inches over. I want to have it even with the bottom. So I start with the bottom of the table, even with the other one. And I do the same thing. Pre-drill. And I only have to pre-drill through the first one. Put the second screw in. Screw that down. Okay. I also need the support on the bottom. Then I use a piece I can use really at any kind, but we'll just put a, a support piece on the bottom. Again, two to three inches from the bottom. It doesn't have to be exact. Drill, pre-drill. I can do both of these at the same time. And if you have a partner, they can hold things for you. It's much easier with a partner than trying to do it by yourself. And it's not quite as important for this framing part to have a partner, but when you start bending the willow, you'll see how it will be more important. Okay, now I've got it on the other side. Move these out of the way. The other leg is going to be just matching this one. Okay, so I go to the same height. Again, I've got to go about two inches back to the top. Get these even. Then I'm going to drill a hole with the, the beveled part down. And even with the top. And then, again, even with the top, and I'm going to try one without pre-drilling. It didn't crack, so I can, I can probably not pre-drill. Okay, and we do the same thing with the bottom here. Get another piece. 
and hopefully that our two pieces will be very similar. And if they aren't, that's okay too, because this is rustic. If we wanted to make it perfect, we would buy lumber. We may have to check this and see if we got to move some screws. This looks like it's, it's a little off, but that's... We can always take the screws out and... If it's not even. Well, here's my two sides. Pretty even that way. Tops are a little bit off. So what we'll do is we'll have to move this one a little bit out. If we leave the top alone, move this back a little, then that'll work. So let's take this one out. And it was about inch and a half difference. And this one was the same way. Just a little longer. Make sure it's about even. Maybe we'll have to move both of these a little. And just kind of try to match them here. There. Tops are good. Bottom is going to be about right. Okay. Our two pieces are pretty similar. Not perfect, but close enough. Okay, the other pieces that we need, we need a couple of angle pieces just to, to support, uh, because after we start bending the willow, it'll, it'll torque our chair unless we have the angle supports. Now, if you're putting in the angle supports, they're just, they're just two pieces that go from corner to corner. And we pre-drill pre those because they're kind of thin. One done, the other one the same way, but again, we should flip it over. And re-drill. Re-drill. And they're pretty much just from corner to corner. Okay, our two legs are done. Now what we got to do is, is put these two together and what we have is longer pieces that we put across the top that aren't cut to length. They're, they're oversized because we don't know how far we'll bend the willow. So here's my two longer pieces. I want my chair to be about 20 inches apart. So what I'll do is I'll just put a bottom piece on here to support the cable till I get it put together. And it goes across from here to here. Here again, it's nice to have somebody hold it. But since we don't have anybody, we'll just do it this way. And maybe we won't. We'll get one side in. We have to pre-drill. I'll pre-drill first. Get my screw in. And then, because I cut my pieces uh, a little over 20 inches, I just know it'll be pretty close to 20, and uh, I don't have to measure unless you're the type of person that's pretty fussy and wants it exact, you may want to measure. But we find that if you just eyeball things, it'll all be evening out at the end because when you work with sticks, None of them are the same measurement anyway. 
Okay, we got those. Then we need a piece across the top in the front because that's where your willow will be going around and that's your seat piece. And you notice that it overhangs on both sides and that's what we want. And we do the same thing there. Pre-drill. Put your screw in to hold your top down, your seat piece down. Okay. Just a little more. And the same on this side. Okay, we have those two on. We do the same thing on the back side. We have to have a piece across the back that extends to both sides. And we just screw that in. As soon as you want to hurry it along and not pre-drill, it gives you a little issue. So I already got a pre-drill on one side and that'll hold it up. And then we can straighten it out and pre-drill the other side. And sometimes these screws on the top may have to be a little longer because there is pressure that's put on when you when you put these on. You notice that one side is way longer than the other. That's not a problem because it'll all uh, be cut off after you get your willow on there. Now, a lot of people do all this by hand. They use nails. The, and I found that I don't like to do things the hard way. I like to do things the easy way. And the easy way is use power tools when you when you can. We also need a brace for the back. And we'll just lay it on there. And what it does just keeps the legs from spreading up. And as you go along, try to make things as even as you can. Okay, that part is done. As you go along, you put a little pressure on it, even it out. And we need one more piece, and that piece goes halfway between these two, and that has to be cut to length. And that's one that you have to be a little more accurate with. And then you'll need a pencil. Usually, uh, pencils don't work on this. Use a magic marker or a, a marker of some type because you can barely see the pencil mark. Okay, now I can cut that off with my folding saw or use a power saw. As you can see, a power saw would be much quicker. Okay, I made it. Okay, and that goes right in between. Must be a pretty good fit because I don't even have to put a screw in there. But I will. About halfway between from the front to the back. And again, it's not critical that it'd be perfect. Okay, one in there. There's one on the other side. Okay. Our frame is done. So it's pretty simple. It took about, oh, 15, 20 minutes maybe. Uh, you know, but I've done a few of these so I don't have to think about it. But they're all the same. Front leg, back leg, cross pieces, two of them, an angle brace, and then Across the front, we got two pieces, and across the back, we've got two pieces. So it's a pretty basic frame for a chair. Okay, let's go out and look at our willow. The willow is right here. We have it. Uh, I picked the willow yesterday. I picked the willow yesterday, 
and generally what we're needing we're needing about 10 pieces for the arms and they have to be at least five feet long that we're going to use uh, for the for the seat part again we need 10 to 50 and because you're going to be breaking some some are not going to be very good because they have knots in them or they have they have uh, sticks growing out the side and then I also need at least six or seven long pieces for the back and we've got enough of each of those here to do our chair so the first thing we're going to do is grab the pieces that we want for the uh, the pieces that we want for the arms so I'll just grab those and bring them in what we're going to be doing now is is getting the pieces for the arms uh, like I said, we'll probably be putting in five pieces on either side. Uh, and before we do that, that's where we use the air nailer to put them in. And before we, we do that, I'm going to take and I'm going to trim off our uh, arm pieces. Because right now, they, it looks like that. They have branches on the end. We want to get rid of those branches. And we'll do that just by using our pruning shears. Cut them off flush. and cut the end off. And we want to make sure that it's long enough because, and we always have to pre-bend our willow. By pre-bending, I mean we're stretching all the fibers. And we're stretching the fibers, and we're gonna work on one side first. We just start down here, bend it around to the front, and it goes under this piece here. Okay? So, but we don't nail it down here on the bottom. The bottom part will be laid nailed last. And we start it in the middle. We start with our air nailer. And what these are is 18 gauge air nails. And they happen to be about an inch and a half long is what I'm using right now. And you can use, you can do all this using a hammer and ring shank nails, but like I told you earlier, it's a heck of a lot easier to use power tools than it is to do it by hand. So now the first thing I do is I put one nail right in, oops, turn my power on, my, hit my air here, and all I do is put one nail right in the middle where our leg came out. Whoops. Goes like that. That's why we kind of like to have a, somebody holding it. Put another nail in there. Now I'm bending it around. Remember I said I'm not nailing the middle. Bending it around. Run it a little higher than level with, with the arm because it'll settle down a little bit after you, after it dries. Right now we're using green wood. We'll put another nail in here. That holds that in place. You can nail it in two directions. And we did not mention that you, if you don't have glasses on, uh, you, and you should have hardened lenses or safety glasses. Okay. I put another nail in there just because I moved it once. I have one side on. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And somebody could be, your partner could be doing all the trimming while you're doing this. Since I don't have a partner, I have to do it myself. Okay, pre-bend. Always pre-bend. Stretch the uh, your fibers need to be to be stretched. And we do the same thing on the other side. If it happens to be not long enough, you'll have to throw that piece away and get another one. If you don't have a partner, what I usually do is I use a clamp. It keeps it from popping out. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the other side. Nail it to the middle. One nail. Or two. Okay, now this is a little important because what I want to do is match the other side, the height of the other side. So you have somebody look across 
Make sure that this is the same height as this. That looks like it's pretty close. And because it's rustic, pretty close is good enough. Put a nail in, I'll put in two. So now I've got two pieces in. Now I do the same thing on the other side. The thing I didn't tell you is that the thin side of the stick goes, goes on the bottom, the thicker side to the top. Now what you can do is you can alternate, but I usually just do the thin side down, thick side up, and all will be the same. I'm not looking for uh, different sizes because they are pretty close to the same, same thickness. Sometimes you may have to have some that are a little thicker and thinner, but you'll find that once you put them together, it doesn't make a lot of difference. some of the nails, nail heads out that came through. There's a few of them that, that go through one but not the other. And when it's all done you'll also have to go back and find some. Now we mentioned that we didn't nail the bottom pieces. We'll do that now. We let nail, lay it on the side, pull the pieces in tight, and nail those in. Now we do that on both sides. And when you get it upside down, there's also nails again that you find that didn't that need to get pulled out or cut off. So we do that. And then as long as we have it over, we'll trim these off. And usually to trim them off, we use our folding saw. I have several because they get dull, uh, because we Tends to saw a nail now and then. The outside's cut off even. Same thing on this side. Then you notice before we didn't cut off uh, the ends of these, and we do that now. Just like we do with the other side. Okay, if you look at it from the front side now, the arms are done. So we have, have the arms on both sides. They're fairly even, about the same height. And later on, we'll sand off the knots that are in there. This is nice and tight. And the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna get started to get the back done. And to get the back, we need one piece across the back and then after that, we'll start with the front, uh, the seat pieces. But only one piece for the back to start with because that's what the seat pieces will be nailed to. So we will go out and find a nice long back piece. Now these pieces need to be about six feet long. So if I, I'm six feet tall, you notice that they're taller than I am. So this piece will be the right height. I'm just gonna start with one. We have to. Trim them off, get the knots off as much as you can. The more knots you get off, the, the smoother your chair will be. And what I do is I leave it as long as I can because I'm not sure where this chair will end up. This first one will be fairly short, so I know we'll have enough here. But the other ones will be longer. And like every other piece, we start by pre-bending it, stretch the fibers. Okay, we'll stretch them as wide as we can. 
So this piece starts on the back side here. Starts right here, and it's going to go around to the back. And we'll have to tuck that in. And here's where the partner helps to hold. And if you don't have a partner, you use a clamp. And what I want to do is I want to have that, because this is the first piece, I want to have that fairly low because the other pieces are going to have to go around the top of that. So usually what I try to do is just get a little over a foot between here and here, and that seems to be the right height. A foot or a little less. So I'm going to nail that in there. One piece there, one nail there, one nail there. And I don't want to nail that bottom until I find out where my other pieces will go. And although that doesn't look like it's very even right now, it will be in the, when I start adjusting it. Now I made in another piece across the back of this when I start putting those in. But you notice that this is quite a bit long, so I'll get rid of that, cut it off. And then we play with this and get it as symmetrical as we can. So does that look pretty good? Both sides pretty even? Because the rest of our chair will sort of go around this. And the next thing we do is we're going to get some small pieces that will make the chair pieces. But we do, before we do that, we have, need a piece to put across the front of that. And I think I'll go out and find one. These are all, all our chair pieces. But we need something just a little bigger. So I think we'll just steal this one right here. I'm going to cut this one off. And I need a piece that goes right here because that's where the, if you look on this chair, the, all, all these pieces then will lay up against this piece. Okay, so that's the piece I'm putting on. pieces on, I mean all these pieces, what I'll be nailing them on with is a stapler. Okay, so we, we call them crown staples and what they are is one inch staples again with a with an air nailer. And the crown staples look like that. And the reason I use crown staples is because the little nail heads on the 18 gauge nailer uh, are, are pretty uh, pretty thin so the, the sticks can walk right through there. With the crown stapler, they'll stay on there uh, pretty well. So, we'll, uh, and I'm gonna put one more one more nailer board on here that I didn't do before. I gotta, I gotta go find one. But I need a support piece, an extra support piece because the wheels are pretty small so we don't want just one piece holding it all up. Okay, now I start on my willow pieces. And you notice I got them all long. I'll cut, cut a little off so they're not touching the ceiling. Okay. One of the first things that we do is we square off the ends of each of these small willow pieces. And if you look at the design on this chair here, it's a sunrise pattern. Just everything goes to the middle and then out to the outside. The one that we're doing now is, I'll do is what we call a diamond pattern. We'll alternate uh, these and they'll look like little diamonds 
are in here. So that's uh, a little different design on the chair. So the way to do that is we just start in the middle, a little to the right of the middle. You don't have to measure, but if we start a little to the right of the middle, take our crown staplers, put our staples in our chair, in our willow piece. And the first piece that we put in, we have to bend all the way around to this edge. So we're going to put a nail in here and go around right to the edge. Okay? So it's bend that way. Our next piece will go inside of that. And we again, we can measure if we want. We'll go about two inches inside of that and just follow the same bend of the, in, the, in the thing. About an inch and a half probably is better than two inches. Staple in each of these places. Try to keep our willow the same distance apart all the way. And you'll find that you can start on the workbench, but as you get higher, you may have to go to the uh, you may have to go to uh, get it on the floor. And as you get to the edge, you you put a little, little more distance in it because you're going to want it to end up about right here. So you're going to have like four of them up to the top. And you notice I'm not trying to judge what size they are. They're very all very similar size. And once they're in there, you don't seem to notice the difference. And once in a while, you've got to try to bend them straight because some will be a little more bent than the others. Part of the character is the odd shapes that some of them have. And some are a little thicker than others, but that's not a problem. direction. Now we're going to go in the other direction. And pattern's exactly the same. We start the other side of the middle, try to make our gaps about the same. And I'm not looking where it's going. Okay, and now, just like before, I went to this side. Now we're going to go to the other side. And here you got to kind of bend it and then try to just match the piece for the other side. Doesn't have to be exact, but get it as close. Watch your fingers. Because the, the staples will go through, later on we'll trim off the ends of the staples. So always trim off the end, flush. And again, about an inch and a half, two inches, or about what the other side is. And look at where the other side goes. That one's a little higher here. About right there. And now if you look, you're starting to see some diamond shaped patterns there. Oh, you're recording? Okay. Yeah, what I'm doing now is just putting a couple staples in here to pull these in together. And then I'm going to just trim the ends off of all these sticks. So I just leave about an inch or two out because all this will be covered up by the pieces we put on the back. Okay, so we got a lot of our chair done now. Now we're going to go and put uh, four more pieces around the back. So if you look at the other chair, uh, you can see that we've got pieces that go up from the first piece. And then, right now, we'll take a little break. Okay, we move down to the floor because we're going to put our back pieces on. And we're putting the back pieces on uh, the back side of those. 
And I'm going to trim these off. That'll be the right length. And because I don't have a lot of good ones, I'll save the best ones for last. And they got to be over six feet long. This is the first one. Second one is looks like it's pretty good. And we'll go back to our air nailer and we get five pieces, just enough. If we don't break any, we should be able to finish this chair. But there's never a guarantee about not breaking. So we'll uh, put as many pieces on as we can. And just like before, kind of leave the pieces long because you can always cut them off. So, my first piece, now here we would do just, just uh, we alternate the thick pieces with the thin pieces. So this first one has thick on that side, thin on the other. So the thin side, thick side goes to where the thin one was before. We work our way around and we tuck that in to there and try to kind of match the other one. Hold that till I get my my piece is over here, this, and this, and my clamp. Okay, and I grab the clamp now because I'm going to put, tuck that in here and I want that to just hold in here. And then I just start nailing this. I leave the bottom, nail it there, and try to put the nails in where the other pieces are. So you're always nailing an extra nail through some of the other stuff. And you can see if you try to nail this with a hammer and, and by hand, it'll take you quite a while. And we'll get those pieces in on the bottom later. And where the nails went through, don't worry about that now. We'll get those later. Another piece, pre-bend it. And like I mentioned, Opposite side, thin side to where the thick side was before, and then the thick side where the thin side is on this side. And I think we can nail that in without it popping out. Okay, now what we want to do is roll this piece over to the top. So you start in the front and roll it to the top and nail it to the other one. The nails go through. That's okay, because we'll cut them off. Okay, next piece. This one's a little thicker, but we'll pre-bend it a little more. And thick side, where the thin side was before. And go around. That will start nailing, and then we don't have to hold it. We're going rolling it to the top again. we got to tuck this side in before I get too far. See, and it just, even though that was a long one, it just barely fit. Oh, missed. A couple more on top, and then we've got to roll it. And this one might be a little tougher to roll to the front. Uh, because these pieces are getting shorter, we get this one on, we may have to quit. Oh, that'll work. Okay. Okay, and again, start rolling it here. And then roll it over the top. And go all the way around. I hope we can tuck this in. Okay, we got that one in. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now I have one piece left. I should put that on there, but it's got a bad bend to it, so I don't know if it'll work at all. But we'll see if we can get it on there. If we can, we'll put it on, and if not, we'll leave it with four pieces. Well, it'll work. So we're going to put that one on. And roll it over the top like 
the other ones. And this one's going to be a little tight so it doesn't break. Well, we did get it in there. purposes is done but what we're going to do now is we're going to roll it over to the side and nail these sides in that I didn't nail the first time okay so you can just see where we can nail these down in the chair try it out oh pretty nice and comfortable and that chair is done uh, anyway goodbye and uh, like I said if you're interested uh, join a class and if not make your own goodbye and enjoy your woodworking